Hello, everybody, and welcome to um, the Bio Dojo's Ask the Sensei. Um, I'm Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei of the Bio Dojo here in Burbank, California. And this is a free monthly um, a question and answer uh, webinar that we do. We are joined by our amazing techno sensei, Dan Leonard. And each month we invite uh, usually someone from the, um, from the voiceover community. But this month, in light of what uh, we as a um, species, <laughs> we on this planet Earth are going through collectively, um, I wanted to invite my senseis, um, Sensei Sarah Eagle Woman, and Sensei Benny the Jet Urquides to join us um, in this forum um, for a couple of reasons. One, um, everything that the VO Dojo is about comes out of my work um, with Sensei Sarah and Sensei Benny. Um, I started with them as a kickboxer. So as I always say at the dojo, I am not a professional fighter, but I have been trained. You could by, be. <laughs> but I've been trained by champions. It's like the the champions. So um, all of the internal work that we do, and all of the spiritual work um, that we do to get aligned with the power of our voice, in order to be able to do the voiceover from this true vibrational place comes out of my work with both because um, the spiritual is at the foundation of the fighting as uh, all of the kickboxing discipline comes out of the spiritual work and and then all of the work it, all of the work of you know voiceover is the vehicle kickboxing is the vehicle but it really is the the eagle medicine and the spiritual power that we are all connecting up in whatever the discipline that we're here to share that, that we that we express it in so um i thought this would be a very powerful time to um get a sense of where everybody's at you know create a place where we can talk about what's 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 scary and what's shifting and how we can anchor ourselves and our own energies. Um, and then also um, to, have, to have the senses here because now more than ever, um, this business of voiceover requires being a warrior of the light, right? And not a warrior like mm, aggressive warrior, but ready to step in the ring and bring everything we have to bring um, to bring forward into this new realm, right? And how do we how do we go into through the darkness and quicken it through? We'll we'll talk. <laughs> hopefully, we'll touch on all of these things. So I want to hear. I want to get a sense of where you guys are at. Um, I know I've been talking to a lot of colleagues that uh, voiceover colleagues that while work is continuing, right? In some ways this is business as usual. <laughs> We're used to sitting alone in our closets by ourselves. <laughs> and, um, and I know um, I'm glad Dan's here. Um, and probably what we'll pro I'm glad Dan's here because I know there's been a lot of technical fears and scared and, and shifts that we've all had to adjust to. Um, but I've also heard colleagues um, say, um, uh, God, I just, I've got this piece of copy and uh -huh. so how how can we stay connected and anchored so we can be um you know uh creating creating the new energy that that is that is here um so um let's see what i'd love to do this is uh, i feel like we're going to be sort of maybe working in a couple of different modalities here and i see um um uh, I see a couple of things. So let me, let me get you guys on. Um, we've got some regular straight up voiceover questions. 
so um and then i wanted to have this opportunity to um um to have sensei benny and and uh and sensei eagle woman uh, sarah eagle woman um share some of their their wisdom as well so first of all let me introduce um Dan, Dan, if you can introduce yourself, and then we'll introduce uh, Sarah Eagle Woman and Sensei Benny, and um, then we'll kind of kind of open it up. So, Dan, can you tell us about yourself? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I forgot to put my gi on this morning. I, <laughs> I feel a little bit more in touch with everyone. <laughs> Um, yes, I'm Dan Leonard, the home studio master. My area of expertise is home voiceover studios. I have built thousands of them. Nobody has built more than I have. And, <laughs> I, and I, I am here to dispel all the mythology that you have around voiceover studios, especially right now because everybody's like, I got to do this. It's like, and, I, and I'm sure that our guests will, will agree. If everybody's running around, how can you act calm when everybody else is running around like a chicken with their head? <laughs> uh, we're going to try and suddenly get down and go, okay, this this is no big deal. But I'm okay. here to help and answer your questions on Home VoiceOver Studio. And I think I think there's something that ties into everything that we're talking about here, Dan, that it's it's not just people who are new that are freaking out. It's oh, no. Oh, no. at the highest levels that always go to studios that are like, oh, Oh, wait a minute. What? So we're all, we're all being shifted. We're all being swooped all over. So there's, you know, something, how can we find what's unifying about that? So well, we'll, we'll find something. Cause yeah. <laughs> my, my inbox is very full right yeah. now. <laughs> Excellent. And Sensei Benny and Sensei Sarah, can you introduce yourself? It's such an honor to have you here. Thank you for taking this. Well, thank you for having yes. us. Um, I'm Sarah Eagle Woman, known as the Urban Shaman, um, intuitive healer, and I'm so honored and to be here with Tish, our eaglet, as we see her. But I don't know if any of you know her spirit name is Singing Elf Woman. How befitting is that? <laughs> Singing Elf Woman, that's her um, spirit, Native uh, American name. So we're happy to be here with you. Yes, and well, and I'm Thundering Iron Horse, known as <laughs> the Jet. <laughs> and so it's got a lot of thunder. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Not the thunder from under. This is the thunder <laughs> from top. <laughs> and Sensei, um, if people don't don't know, the, it's it's so funny because I'm so blessed to know Sensei Sarah and Sensei Benny as my senseis, and we work together. We we work together closely in a lot of different ways. Um, and I forget um, that, you know, then there's oftentimes we're out and other people are like, oh, it's Benny the Jet. <laughs> is Benny <laughs> is, is a legendary, um, legendary kickboxer who's um, been seminal in anything, anything that's happening in mixed martial arts or um, modern, day, modern day martial arts. Um, Sensei has been a part of, of, of that. So, um, yeah. So, uh, Sensei's, some of the things that we've been talking about for the last 20 years that we've been working together, both as fighters and as spiritual um, fighters, <laughs> um, spiritual warriors, um, you know, the, the foundational principle of the dojo comes from our work together. That is, voiceover is communication, and communication is the exchange of vibrational energy. And when we can take that down, everything down to that level, that is where we really connect, right? So that, that um, eagle woman is your saying, listen for the energy underneath the words, and that's where the communication comes. The other things that, that keep on coming to my mind, um, you know, from, from the, the first day of our initiation in Sedona, where um, we gathered, oh, this, this is making me emotional. Um, we gathered for my first um, initiation to the ways um, on September 13th, 2001 in Sedona. So we began this journey when the world stopped 
like this. And all of these years that we've been working together, um, Eagle Woman, every, every time we gather, says we are the ones we have been waiting for. And this is what we're preparing for. <laughs> so as all this has unfolded, I was on the phone with Eagle, I'm like, this is what we've been talking about, right? Yes. So this is this opportunity. So I'll, I'll put I'll put that out there. Um, I see everybody. Um, I see everybody um, saying where where you're calling from. Um, if you could also put in, like, write down something that you're feeling scared about, or powerless about, or something 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 that's going on because we all have something that we're dealing with. And it might be just like, how do I keep myself physically from going nuts while I'm sitting in the house, right? You know, it's, it's just, I'd love to hear where people are going with this. Um, so we'll have uh, Sensei, Sensei Benny and Sensei Sarah talk a little bit, and then we'll come back and kind of mix up the questions again. But um, be, be strong, be true, be brave. Um, this, is, this is totally safe place. It's not therapy. Um, as uh, Sensei Bunny was just starting to talk about, it's 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 finding solutions. So um, I'll let you guys talk, and you guys write write what you're thinking about here. Okay, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> okay. Well, I do remember that that time that we were together. It was when the 9/11 happened, and I remember we were driving to Sedona, and how quiet it was. How quiet. Um, no airplanes in the sky. It was just so surreal and i remember that when we got to sedona how peaceful and quiet but i remember that we would use our voice you know to the voice to sing to express and as my teachings our teachings are listen to the vibration underneath your words free from judgment and criticism there's something about when you listen to a person's vibration not so much the words first, but listen to the vibration. You can really understand where they're coming from, mind, body, spirit. And so that's one of the practices that I um, often say to do when you are in the world, especially if you're on the telephone, you're listening to that person and not judging it or criticizing, but just flowing with it. And you can really hear like with compassion, empathy, and an understanding with wisdom when you listen to vibration under words. So I feel with voice, um, with your words, the work you're doing is it's with all of you that you're doing this. It's important to listen to that frequency, that vibration, because truly we all are vibration first. We are spirit first and then the words follow. And so the foundation that you are learning is about um, practicing the vibrational work um, through your words, through your singing. Um, singing Elk Woman, she has the most profound voice. I'll never forget when she first, um, when she opened that beautiful mouth of hers and, and began to sing, it was just, it was transformative. And on the vision quest that we went on in Sedona, we had her singing and doing prayer um, songs and also doing the mantras, uh, the native mantras that we um, taught everyone in the circle. And she let us in and it was chilly. Everyone was just um, resorted to crying and just very emotionally deeply felt. So again, vibration. When you listen, you close your eyes and you're listening to words, but listening most importantly to the vibration. Mm -hmm. Which is another, which is another rule of voiceover. Listen carefully, and then I think this word of transformation is something that we all can take in, because this is this is where our power is. This is where our gifts are. Are are we are here to use our voice to be able to transform what's happening in the world right now, even if it's just every commercial, every 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 corporation, every company rebranding to tune in, we are the vehicle of that. Um, Sensei, you started to talk about um, solutions and Yikita, the way of Yakita Khan being way of solutions. Um, can you say more about that? 
Absolutely. You know, it's like anything else. Yukirokan means a way of life, but in a way of life, there are solutions. And they come to the dojo looking for solutions, looking for help mentally, physically, spiritually. I look at everything that comes daily. I'm, I'm in the moment of today. And I'm not looking about tomorrow or next week and so forth. I'm just staying in the moment of today. And so in Yukirokan, what I, what I was teaching is about learning to stay, okay, to stay quiet, okay, and to be able to hear yourself. That means being able to hear deep inside, okay, to hear what I call the voice of your soul. And the voice of your soul sometimes, okay, wants to talk, but we override it, okay? We want to do it our way. And, but when we learn to listen, to the voice of our soul. Some people call it intuition. Some people call it, wow, you know, that I, I'm a strong believer if, if you sit quiet enough, long enough, you can actually hear what's really going on. And the journey is about finding that, okay? And the journey is the time that, I mean, everybody was born brilliant coming in. And coming in brilliantly, we forget. What happened? We, we start to actually. Um, oh, there we are. Uh, <laughs> we start to actually get uh, reprogrammed okay, by whoever is raising us. Or usually, it's our parents, and sometimes they're putting their emotions into us for protection. But you know, and I take it this way. You know, usually, uh, if I have a knowing coming in this world, and I'm looking, if you look at a newborn baby and they look like, wow, they're, they're so out there they're talking to spirits and we're looking like oh i wonder what he is thinking she is thinking and so what happens is we every day our teachers start to teach us and reprogram us how their emotions are whether it be their anger their fear their frustration whatever it is that vibration that they're sending to us every day starts to change and that's a reprogramming by the time i'm five years old I start to forget what I came in for because I just been reprogrammed through, through their emotions. And now, but I have no experience of it. So from five to seven, I'm experiencing because I, I have no experience of it. I'm experiencing what they're telling me. And it's almost like saying, don't go in the room. And I'm thinking, why? Don't touch that. You'll burn yourself. Well, why? So I'm, I have no experience of it, so I don't know. So that's where I, I really believe that programming Okay? And we all look for, like, for instance, we look for heroes. Oh, I want to look like that. Oh, I want to do that. Oh, I want to. So for, we look for heroes that inspire us. But most of all, we look for mentors okay, that gives us solutions. Because a mentor would turn us inside out. That he, would, he would make us look at ourselves. And sometimes we don't want to look at ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we numb it. We, we drink, we, we, whatever supplements you're taking, you, don't, you want to numb it because it's painful emotionally. So I believe that the journey is like a roller coaster ride up and down of emotions. And, and when we're going up, it's great, but going down, everybody's fearful, we get stuck. And only when you're threatened, everything that you hide within you comes up. The good, bad, and ugly comes up. And that's where the solution comes from. That's where Yukito-kan, we step in with Yukito-kan, gives that solution of, okay, let's look at this. And just not listen to the words, listen, let's listen to the message. As Eagle Woman was talking about the vibration of words, well, people talk a lot with words, but if you really hear their message and bypass the word and go right to the message, which Eagle Woman does, she goes right to the message of, okay, I understand what you're really <laughs> saying. You're saying all this, but that's not what you really mean. This is what you mean. And and what I love, what, what is powerful, well, there's so much that is powerful about that, uh, Cincy, but if we, if we look at everything that's happening around us as this shaking up, as we are all, we're, we're, we're sitting in our houses, but what's being required of us is stepping into the ring and having nothing else, nothing else to distract us really 
No, really, <laughs> particularly at this particular moment, right? So we have this opportunity to step into the ring with ourselves and then look at what is, what is possible. I mean, that's, that's, that's the, you know, what, what are the possibilities and how do we, how, we, how do we acknowledge that this is going to be happening and then we always know how to get to the next uh, redirect, right? Sensei. <laughs> um, that's a great okay. metaphor to stepping <clears throat> into the ring because that's truly what we're doing right now. We've stepped in it and it's important not to be reactive. Um, um, it's important to just, you know, as Sensei would say, um, control your emotions under pressure. So it's about, mm -hmm. you know, monitoring those emotions and working, them, but don't be reactive. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, and I think this is, this is an interesting thing because we've got blends. We've got a blend of, of, of folks who are on here and um, want to, and, um, and there's people who are, um, there's people who've been doing this forever, right? These are the people, uh, voiceover. Um, so these are the people, you know, at the dojo, I always say, um, breaking into voiceover, you need to be able to get on the highway going 85 miles an hour with people who've been driving the autobahn for 25 years. Can you do it? Yes. Can you do it on a scooter? No. But um, basically what's happening now is no one's driving the roads per se, right? And the people who've been driving the Audubon, um, as I said, are equally as shook up. I mean, in some ways, not as much because they're, you know, the, the work keeps on going and they, they have the skills. So really it's just kind of making adjustments to how that happens. And then there's people who've been on, you know, preparing to get like been practicing driving and been on the road a little bit that this whole shakeup shifts in a different way. And then there's people who are looking at this shakeup as like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be driving the Audubon. What, how, how do I get on that? So I think the, the, the other metaphor that's really powerful about this warrior spirit and the fighting, right, is um, stepping into the ring is not something that everybody chooses to do, right? And not everybody chooses to do it at the most professional level, right, which is what creating a sustained successful voiceover career can be. Um, and um, oh, where am I going? Oh gosh, come on, come on, little idea. Um, <laughs> but if you do, you don't want to step into the ring and get your face punched off, right? So that's, that's one way of looking at it. And we are all in a situation where we are, we are having to be prepared and ready for, for street fights, right? Um, and, and being able to unleash the warrior instinct. So I think that there's some blend of looking at this opportunity of how do we take our, our instinct and that, the warrior spirit and it, um, get it working for us now and then moving into the Audubon. So too many metaphors. Um, <laughs> let's, um, let's, let's segue. So, so one of the things that is, that has been particularly challenging, um, particularly challenging is everybody needs to be set up at home at the highest level to be able to gain access to the work. So Dan, um, thanks for, thanks for uh, being here today. Can you just, can you just give your, like your, um, I don't know what it would be the fireside chat or your presidential address of like, yes, we are in a situation, but here's here's how we calm ourselves and here are the actions that we can be taking because i know i know you do that so well when it's not stressful times so to have your um beautiful simple practical kind generous <laughs> approach is like is is really good yeah you know i'm seeing a lot of questions in the in the chat room and in the q a about how do i start with a home studio well how much time do you have mm -hmm. um usually I, I i i think that 
everybody tends to completely overthink this because they look at it from a perspective of what people thought about recording from 1965 for some reason. Uh, digital recording today is super duper easy. And there are some very simple tools you can use. But most important, forget about the technology for us. Oh, ironically. And think about, yes, because that actually is the key to success with a home voiceover studio. The truth is, is there are three major things you need to think about. One is the acoustic properties of the room in which you record. Keeping sound out and keeping your voice from bouncing around the room and back to your microphone. Do, and, there, and there's a lot to that and how you do that it requires some instruction and a lot of experience, which I, like I said, I've built a lot of studios. There's no one size fits all answer here. Every particular studio needs to be individually developed. Uh, and they're not studios. We're not talking about having a couch and guitars hanging on the wall and, and, and gold records and, and, and windows and things like that. You're going to be in your closet or you're going to build something very, very simple that will be easy and, uh, to take apart and put down depending on where you live. It, it's an entire course. It's not one of those, well, let me answer that question of how you do that right now. Uh, second thing is microphone technique. And if I can show you my microphone technique here very quickly, you can see, here's my microphone. Uh, everybody thinks it's supposed to be right set up and you talk right into it like that. You don't. This thing shouldn't even be a factor in, in what you're doing. Uh, you want to forget that you're, you're talking on a microphone. You want to remember that you are a voice actor and that you have to concentrate on the copy. There's no piece of equipment no microphone, no nothing that will make you a better voice actor. It's not going to change the way you read. It's <laughs> all about how you use it. So, you know, with a studio condenser mic, it should be upside down at eye level, same plane with your ears, your copies down here. And because of that, you don't need a pop screen because tell you what, they don't, they're not designed for voiceover. There is so much misinformation out there about how you set up your home voiceover studio. Do not go on Facebook forums and say, what's the best microphone for voiceover? Because if I'm on there, my hand will digitally reach out and grab you by the throat and um, <laughs> make you feel very uncomfortable very quickly. Um, it's not the microphone, it's not the equipment, it's how you use it. The other thing is setting proper input levels. You'll notice that you know, I'm not, my voice isn't breaking up. It's not, you know, if I get really close to the mic, you'll notice that it sounds very deep and overmodulated. You don't want that either. We have, we have a course that we can, you know, that I can do private consultations with people. If you want to ask the simple question, how do I do it? How do I do it cheaply? Teach me everything while I'm standing on one foot. Uh, you're in, you're in big trouble. This is, it is something you need to learn, but is not something to obsess about. There is not something out there that's going to miraculously give you a, a great home voiceover studio. You need to talk to somebody who knows what it's supposed to sound like and how to set it up. Do not talk to recording studio engineers. They have no interest at all in you doing this well because then you're taking their job. But this, this particular situation is now creating a very, very different situation for everybody where you have to have a home studio. Don't panic about it. Get in touch with me. And, and I, can, I can teach you how to do that. Uh, it's not something that, you know, once you get past that, I'll get you to the point where it's hit the record button and do what you do, which is voice act. Yeah. And, and the rest then, is actually pretty simple. Um, and uh, Dan and I are in the, talking about putting together something that would be a, a focused a little bit more on getting some of the basic questions answered and then and then Dan's available to like <clears throat> in on your specifics because um, I think I think one of the tech questions Dan that comes up is there's there's a difference between um, maybe audition quality and home studio quality you know, like but there's not is digital recording is digital recording it's simple <coughs> to set up something that will work well uh, you know when you're doing production work when you're actually sending stuff out yeah it's got to be pretty good but you want that at to start with. Uh, and that's not hard to achieve. Uh, you know, there are certain, everybody's like, what do I do when I'm on the road? You know, I'm like, well, go in your car and use your iPhone. They're not interested. So no, none of these guys 
-hmm. None of the people who hire us are interested in our production skills. They only want to hear that you can see the copy, understand what it's about, and make it sound like you're the one that's saying it. Mm -hmm. And and you know, and that's the stuff that you teach, Tish, and and all our other coaches. Uh, do not obsess about the technology. Do not listen to all these guys saying you need this processing unit or you need this microphone. It's all nonsense. So we so you need to get it to a place where where it is it is uh, get it so your setup is this is delivering what is needed for this session. And, and when the client's happy, then it's like, yeah. And, if, um, and the thing is, is nobody needs to see how the sausage is made. <laughs> exactly. Only hear it. So I think that, I think that covers a lot of the, a lot of the, the questions. Um, I, uh, Kishan, I, uh, Ki, Kishan, Kish, Kishan, I'm not sure how to say your name, but um, I think, I think what Dan's talking about is exactly right. Developing bio tech, techniques, and it's really easy to get caught down the rabbit hole of, but what about my software? Now that being said, there are things that you do need to take into account of workflow and making sure everything's working. And like so that's, but this is this goes back to Sensei Benny. This is why I, the dojo curriculum is designed in belt levels, right? Because sure. everyone might come to the dojo and be like. Sensei, I want to do that flying spinning cat back kick and break that, you know, and, and kick, you know, do that thing like you did in the movie, right? <laughs> right. Fantastic. And what would be the first thing that you would say? Like, so what do you say to a white belt? What is the first thing that you would say to a white belt? Well, it's like anything else, you know, when people come in, they say, well, how long would it take me to get my black belt? So I take my black belt and give it to them. I say, what else you want? And, and so uh, they say, well, I don't want it like that. I said, so how do you want it? So you have, first of all, you have to know what you really want. Most people come in, okay, and, and most people don't really know what they want. They say, well, I want to defend myself. I said, okay, you're in the right place. So the fountain of youth is endurance to go the distance, quick recovery to repeat it, flexibility to have the freedom to go any direction you want. So that's the first thing, all right? Just start on your cardio, just start on wind. Okay? After that, okay, just work on quick recovery, which is breath medicine, which is Eagle Woman, you know, she uh, teaches breath medicine. So when most people breathe, they breathe vertically, okay? up and down when they breathe, but that's a hollow breathing. You need to shift it to horizontally because long distance runner open their lungs horizontally. So you get more wind, so you last longer. So you, that's a technique. How do you, you know, how do you breathe properly? And then the flexibility is there's dip. Most people say, uh, I, I watch people stretch and I said, what are you doing? I said, I'm stretching. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, because most people really don't know how to stretch properly. And certain muscles will allow you to do certain technique. So you say, I'm just going to do a warm up and then do all these different techniques and you end up popping or overextending or pulling something because you didn't stretch the muscles that you needed properly. So when somebody tells me, I want to do the jump spinning back kick, I said, okay, first of all, let's work on your endurance, let's work on your strength, let's work on your quick recovery, and let's work on see how high, let's start working on jumping high. Once you learn how to jump high, I'll show you how to spin and balance yourself in a spin in the air. And once you got that, then learning how to land properly so you don't pop your uh, pop your ankles, you know, or your knees and stuff like that. Learning how to land. Oh, oh, wait, come back. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. I, think, I think that it just it goes on and on and on. But when somebody <laughs> always tells me, I want, I want, I say, well, the, you know, the love of labor is not for free. And, you know, <laughs> love is not for free. You got to work at it. So everything you love, you got to work at it, you know. So I, I love my wife. <laughs> but I can't just say I love her. And she said, okay, great. But she wants to see action. Okay? So I have to work. Okay? I have to work on showing my love for her instead of just saying, I love you, I love you, and just leave. Okay? Without action, they're just words. They're hollow words. Mm -hmm. So my words are very solid and very sound. Yeah. And, and I love this. So, so if, we, if, we, um, if we exchange spinning back kick, to I want to be a promo announcer for a major network. 
Okay, well, great. You know that. So, so if we, if we, if we, if you just put this together, great. You could step up and do your version of a spinning back kick, just stepping up to the mic, and then you can watch Joe Cipriano do his version of a spinning back kick because Joe is like <laughs> sensei, right? He's a champion. He's been doing this for years. He knows what it is. So this is this is really powerful, and I think it's 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 um, one of the reasons that I also wanted you guys to be here because um, it really is what the dojo is about, right? I think a lot of people come to this like, okay, I'd like to do voiceover. And some places will go like, okay, here's your black belt. Just like you, you I could, I can't see you guys, but I could feel everyone go, oh, <laughs> right? <laughs> but that's, that's sometimes what people think, right? Um, so a lot of, a lot of other things, but, um, the other things that are that you can also think about this is if you're you know, if you do other sports then you might have some of that if you do other sports you might have some of that stamina and and flexibility all these things that are necessary and then you figure out how to apply it to this medium so i think right now as everything's shaken up there's going to be a lot of people like oh i did something else but how do i apply this to this as well um that's, that was really helpful. Um, um, Eagle Woman, um, let's see. Um, yeah, let, let's let's see what it's. Um, uh, Lloyd, if you could type your if you could type your question in the thing. So hopefully this this is kind of. Um, this is kind of uh, answering some questions. There's questions here like where can I get auditions and things like that, that, um, you know, we can, we can, I can kind of type some of those informational things. Um, um, here's, here's, I want to, I want to switch gears. Um, uh, I want to switch, I want to say, um, there's, there's something that I caught over here. Um, with everything going on now, is it okay to continue marketing yourself? I think this is an interesting, this is an interesting question that has some sort of spiritual levels. Um, you know, in, in some perspective and, and, and open this up to, to everyone on, uh, everyone here. Um, I think in some ways it's essential it's essential that we're marketing ourselves. It's essential that we all keep on going and we all keep on keep on letting people know that we are here to share our voices and to be the voice of whatever they need, right? It's like almost like I think like uh, I'm a surrogate, right? I am I am the voice I am the voice of Subaru. Subaru has all these people who create, you know, there's the, all the people who make the cars and then there are all the people who figure out what the marketing plan is. And then there's all the people who make the ads and then I'm the voice of Subaru. So we are, we are that voice. So of course we should always be sharing what we have to, to gift to the world. The question is, how are you marketing and how can you be helpful? And how do you approach one of the, one of the, um, things that I profess at the, uh, at the dojo is there is no they, there's only we. And when you approach this, when you approach all of this in that way, then it's kind of like what we're all doing at home in theory. I have a house with, with teenage boys, so this is very theoretical, but we're all doing what we can to help, right? If we know that drives the other person crazy, maybe not do that, right? Or if there's something that we see needs doing, how do you do it, right? Or what can you, what can you, going back to what Eagle Woman, you were saying of how do you intuit what, what is something that, it, that could be needed or, or affect something. So um, open that, open that up. I'd like to speak on the marketing. Mm -hmm. I think it's important at this time how the message that you're delivering out to the world, you know, of yourself. And, and this would be a great opportunity um, to, to give your message out, you know, because there's so many people that are looking for something um, to distract or something to give comfort or something just to focus on other than, you know, what's happening. 
Um, not that you shouldn't focus on what's happening. Of course you should. But it, the way you represent yourself, the way you market yourself, I feel it's an important time right now to do so. Mm -hmm. And a lot of a lot of things that, that have been happening. I'll, I'll share a little story about. Um, I had a private coaching with um, an amazing, amazing student uh, at the in the Mystery to Mastery program, um, and he's a very, very skilled professional singer, and he does side gigs. Um, he does side gigs, uh, you know, to, to support that. And um, he he lives in New York, and um, and I was like. Um, I called the other day and he was a little shell shocked because there's a lot happening. There's a lot energetically happening that we all have to keep on yes. figuring out how to uh, make sure that it doesn't catch us down. But I was like, hmm, you're 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 kind of like you're kind of feeling like Thor in Endgame here, like your pot belly in your pajama pants here, guy. We gotta we gotta get your hammer back in your hand. <laughs> And so we started going like, okay, yes, totally effed, right? It, if you look at it this way, you're, we're all just totally effed, right? But what if we look at it another way? First of all, I said, so you're a singer, right? But you're also a bartender, but you don't want to be a bartender, right? And he was like, no. Um, and, um, and then I said, and you've been training for the last nine months to get this voiceover. You've been training in a really focused, intense way. And you're ready to step, you're ready to get your black belt because you've earned it. Because you have these skills and you have this, you have this alignment. You have you 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 can you can do a spinning back kick, dude. Like you're you you've got it. Um and um so why don't you remember those things and then take advantage of this time and being prepared like to step in what else are you going to do what else are you going to do now nobody can do anything right in the old ways that we had done it or the ways that we knew this is something else eagle woman um um forget what you knew and remember what you forgot yeah. right can you yes. start to speak of that yes Forget what you know, remember what you forgot. So this is a perfect opportunity to forget everything, not to put it in the closet or under your rug, but actually um, don't draw from the reference points of the past. And it takes courage to keep just showing up, to keep showing up, and not to be in a repetitious way of the past, but trying something new, having the courage to step up and try something new, um, say something new, do something new. And I feel like right now, even if we're in our home, there's so many opportunities to discover so much more about you. Mm -hmm. And this is an, a perfect opportunity. But forget what you know. Remember what you forgot. Remember truly who you are. You know? mm -hmm. And like since I said, it's the voice of the soul. Listen. Uh, listen to what's being told to you now. And we have a perfect, perfect opportunity to sit still and listen to that voice of the soul so practice practice yeah and sensei i know i know i've i've shared with you that that some of the foundations of work at your dojo on the yukita conways sensei benny has the rules of the dojo and the rules of fighting and at the vo dojo we have the rules of the dojo and the rules of voiceover and the rules of voiceover are share your truth Trust your voice. Keep energy moving forward always. Listen carefully, which we had talked, we've been talking about. And then play fully, right? Playfully. And play fully. Because if you step into the ring and you're not playing fully, allow me to tell you. <laughs> so there's been many times when since it's like, okay, get in with the big Russian guy. <laughs> He's getting ready for the fight next week. <laughs> in. And if you're not playing fully, things happen. <laughs> right? That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, you know, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Just like you have rules, you know, you, you have rules of the dojo, rules, and, you know, they apply to your belief system of what you believe 
and with the, the knowing. Because again, through experience, there's a knowing that you own. It's your power. So you don't give your power away. Mm. You know, and a lot of people give their power away. And whether it be emotionally, whether it be in relationship, when they give their power away, they, they feel helpless in that. So I say, if you're going to uh, give power, loan it. Loan your power. So what way, if they misuse it, they misuse it, take it back. <laughs> Just say, you know what? You don't deserve. You don't deserve my mm. power. You don't deserve. And, mm. and so in the dojo, that, that's what it's all about is listening creates reflex, meaning be able to really hear the word that you'll be able to respond to it in a quick way. Because if you have to think about it, you've just been hit. It's too late. <laughs> eh? and that's it. So, and so in this listening creates reflex, it, it teaches an inner understanding. And then the second is balance. Eh? In life, you need balance. So in, in the fight game, you need balance. In the air, on the ground, eh? or standing, you need balance you know and so in life is that i always say you know actually with eagle woman and i we had a debate one time i said uh too much too much love is not healthy and she said no we we need to talk about this have a debate on this <laughs> so i said okay i said this is what i mean when you love something or somebody so much that it becomes possessive and it changes from loving to need gotta have a want and it changes that love. So I, so I said, well, everything has balance. Life has balance. So love has balance. And, and I, let, I make sure that she knows, hey, and not just verbally, but physically and spiritually, my love for her. But there, there's a balance where it's not over okay. Every time she steps out the door, where are you going? Where are you going to meet? Where are you going to see <laughs> Well, you know, how long do you think you'll take? Well, you took a long time. What happened? Did you see anybody? So now it's my love for her changed. So in the dojo, you know, you need, eh, you need balance in that. And so in that balance in the rules means that everything you do in your life. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. And, I'm, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. I'm not listening. Three, <laughs> self, you know, self-centering your weight means always staying centered, right? Not too much in one way and not too uh, much on the other way. So you, you're balancing, whether you're balancing in the air or you're balancing standing or you're balancing on the ground, there's balance in the movement of that, right? And so, so we know listening creates reflex, balance, self-centering your weight, uh, Posture creates good vision, good focus, which again, the posture is so important and what you're looking. Sometimes we always think we see what you're looking at, but it's not really what you really see. Because in our head, we get in our head with it and you need to just get out of your way so you can actually really see what's in front of you. Okay, so uh, in that balance creates that. Okay, and so, and obviously self-confidence is knowing you can do something even though you never tried it means I know I can do this well I you've never done that before I said I know I have it but I know I can so there's a power in that knowing okay? and and we all come in with this knowing is sometimes we doubt ourselves it's almost like you're going to go to a fight and you're pacing back and forth did I train enough did I run enough did I do enough and you get yourself so up uh, so worked up that you you get tired before you even get in the fight so the idea is you got to know that I've done whatever I needed to do. And my opponent, I'm grateful and thankful that he showed up because without him, I can't do what I love doing. So I'm always thankful for my mm -hmm. opponent to show up, in, especially in the way you And you know what's so beautiful about these five rules or the rules of the dojo, uh, the principles, is that they really are, um, at, you can apply these rules to your daily life. You know, it's really a way of life. And so it's not just for... Um, the dojo per se it's for taking it out and that's what I love about um, these teachings is because it really does apply to your everyday life mm -hmm. and that's that's <laughs> yeah so, so there's there's the rules of of um, the Jets gym dojo 
and then there's the rules of, of um, the VO dojo, but there's a lot of overlap <laughs> because really yes. we're doing the same, we're doing the same work in different mediums. That's all it is. And the bravery and the skill that is required to step into the ring as a fighter is what is required to really do well in the voiceover world. Absolutely. And just as, just as you will meet fighters like Sensei Benny, you know, he'll, he'll tell you how great he is because he's great, but he's also one of the gentlest, calmest, um, most gener just, just uh, attentive people because he knows what he's about and he he's he's right here and i think you know your experience the experience um that hopefully all of you have and all of you cultivate of you know really great voiceover people being like yeah because i'm really good at what i do and how can we cultivate that in you so so just understanding that it's it's the same thing the same exact thing it's not just saying words just like it's not just punching a bag, right? It says, I'm going to fight. No, 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 no. Um, you know, we talk about, we talk about, um, you know, uh, voiceover is a great way to make a living, but then it also becomes your way of life. And it's say it same with fighting. Um, yes, this is, this is fantastic. Um, how are you guys doing? Is this all resonating with you um um there's there's plenty more where all of this came from you know this this is what we do every this is what we do every single day at the dojo and whether you come and join us for a two-hour workshop or um, a six a six week virtual intensive or a weekend intensive or choose to carry on with our full training program um, which is called from mystery to mastery. Um, you know, that would be like come that would be like coming to Sensei, like Hillary Swank in, in Million Dollar Baby, and say, I want to be a fighter. And then there would be a moment where Sensei would go, <laughs> Okay, let's go. And then <laughs> and then your work begins, right? And and then as working pros, um, we also create this place to come together and um activate and spar, spar with each other, right? Spar in the way that we do when we work with, when we have the dojo. Um, when we have the dojo, you have pro fighters who train at that dojo who work each other out each day. That's what we do with our nth degree program, right? The mystery to mastery is divided into four belt levels. You are handed your belt when you earn it, your black belt, and then the, the working pro workout uh, work is, um, format is called the nth degree and we spar and we focus, we help each other focus and we create a, a, a collective energy to get towards where we want. And then we have our VO Dojo Pro Fight Club, which is watch the Friday night fights, right? This is like, come, come and step into the ring, um, brings together top notch talent with the decision makers who hire us for a fiercely friendly face off that makes the audition process transparent. So wherever you are on this journey, all this that we're talking about is happening on a daily basis for whatever time you're with us. This is, this is the energy um, that it's always just you. You never do it alone. And we are better for working together. Um, and, I would say, Tish, if I could interrupt. Yeah, please, of, course, I, of course. I think that um, there's a thing here, and I'm sure the senseis would agree, it's all about commitment. Mm -hmm. We're willing to do to make this happen for you. If it's like a pipe dream, something like, well, I could do this. Like, it's got to be in your gallbladder to want to do this. Folks. <laughs> uh, this is, this is a, it's a, it is like karate or, or any one of the martial arts, which is why it's such a great metaphor for the dojo here. It, it has to become part of who you are. And it is a discipline. And there are many disciplines to this particular uh, discipline. And discipline. <laughs> you have to be one, you've got to have the talent and you have to believe in yourself that you have the talent Two, you have to have the business acumen in order to understand 
how to organize a business because this is not show business. This is a business business. You are a freelance entrepreneur and you are selling the skill sets that you have and the talents you have to the people that want it. And you've got to be confident enough to do that and keep track of who they are when you work, keep track of the accounting and all those sorts of things. Then there's the technological part of it, which is not hard to master. Uh, it's a matter of studying. So in order to make the commitment to do this, God, I sound like I'm on a public radio station now. So in order to make this happen, you need to commit and take the classes, take the course. It is not going to be absorbed by osmosis and reading stuff in Facebook and in LinkedIn and all these different groups. Hmm. You've got to study with someone who knows what it's about and has done it, like Tish, like me. Uh, you want to learn martial arts? work with our guests here. It's, it's one of those things. You have to make the commitment. If you're not willing to make the commitment, it's just, you know, you're, you're, you're just, it's, it's going to be a hobby. And there, you can't compete with this if you're doing it as a hobby. This is an actual profession that requires study, commitment, and, and investment of your time and of your capital. And, and that being said, um, um, in the, in the, uh, that being said, does that mean you shouldn't start now? No, all the more reason to start. Got the time. Right now. However, um, one of the other things that were really super clear, you know, just like here, Sensei handed you your black belt, whatever. Um, it is important to recognize that there is a gestation period to this. And each one of you is somewhere on this gestation period, right? Whether, you know, um, Benita's on here and she's, you know, she's been on some amazing animation shows and she has a whole nother fantastic career that she has. And she has, you know, she, she's been on things that people dream of. Um, and she, you know, she, there's, there's still stuff that she needs to know. And there's some, there, um, Winter, Winter Lee is saying, I'm interested. So the, the key is that, you know, start, start where you are and and then continue to explore and if you if you do it and you love it then keep on it and then there'll be a part where you get to and you're like i don't love this anymore and then you go like wait no i do love this right just like when sensei's kicking your butt and you you can't take a sip of water and you're gonna pass out at that moment, you may not like it so much, but you love it, <laughs> and then you then you get through it, and and um, and it happens. So, um, so in these times that are this shift of everything, everything we know except for what Sensei was saying about about love and going down to the vibration of how we are connected to each other, everything else is shifted. Um, why not get started now? And then, um, you know, there, there are ways, there are ways to figure out how to start making money, but just like you wouldn't gestate a baby and then, um, have it be born. Well, first of all, you'd have to wait for the baby to be born. Right. But you don't go like, all right, baby, let's make some money. Let's make some money. Right. Okay. We're, uh, we're going to make this baby <laughs> make us all the money. Right. So, it's an interesting time that people are in a place where if you're, if you're starting this or taking this on, that it, it might be something like, oh, that would be a great way to make money. It is a great way to make money. It is a fantastic, wonderful way to make money. And um, like no, no, no BS, it will not be the thing that makes you money instantly. It can. We call that the helicopter coming and you might step in and go like, Hey, I uh, just booked a thing on a thing. It's great. But you're not, you're not an experienced mountaineer. The helicopter is taking you. So anyway, there's a whole nother discussion. So I want to make sure that everyone, wherever they are in their gestation period, know, in their gestation in this knows that there's always something next, right? Um, are, are there even numbers sensei for, for what degree black belt you are? <laughs> this, like, pretty, uh, you know, I, I hold nine black belts in nine different systems for the last 62 years. Um, so <laughs> my first uh, black belt was in uh, 60, so, and that was in judo. However, 
is not degrees at all. It's to me, people sometimes call me master. And I said, you know what? I'm a sensei. They said, well, you know, when we go to these conventions and everybody has red belts and all masters and they call me master, I said, don't call me master, call me sensei. They said, but you're a master. I said, no, just call me sensei because I'm a teacher first. I don't, <clears throat> my rank does nothing for me. The colors does nothing for me. Okay? And, it, and especially in the street, it doesn't help me anyway. <laughs> However, it doesn't matter about the rank. What matters is my experience of knowledge of knowing. That's what counts. That's what I take with me. That's my riches, is my knowing. Hey, not well, because uh, again, I'm not my resume. You know, I'm, uh, yes, I did all that. I did fighting, la, 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 on and on. But that's not who I am. That's just what I've done. And so who I am is really, I walked into as a teacher. Okay? And that's what I choose to be, sensei, as a teacher. Uh, us. <laughs> well, Kish, it, Kish, I got a roll because yeah, um, everybody I, is calling me right now. So. Yeah, no, no. Thank you so much for taking this time, Dan. And let's keep on talking. And then does, did everyone get how, um, how to reach Dan? I am putting it in the chat room as we and, speak. It's and then, um, dot com. Excellent. And thank you, Dan. Thank you for all the good That's work. Hi. Hi, I'll talk to you later. Yes. And, um, and uh, Sensei Benny, if, if, um, if people are interested in working with you, I mean, obviously working in groups, and <laughs> we're, we're not doing kickboxing class right now, but how are you able to work with people? How can, how can people work with you? How, how can they find out? How can everyone find out how to reach you? What's your website or how would you like people to contact Benny you? BennyTheJet.com. Benny. And also yes. BennyTheJet.com. And Eagle Woman, how can we yes. work with you, my dear? Excellent. How, how can everyone reach, reach you? Eagle Woman. Just EagleWoman.com. EagleWoman.com. Eagle, let me spell that correctly. EagleWoman.com. And, um, um, if you are feeling any um, any deep, deep um, anything about everything that's going on, Eagle Woman can work with your energy and your grid and get you back to yourself um, so that you can stand strong in these in these times. So um, excellent. And then if you are interested in working in any way, shape, or form, with the dojo, um, go to www.thevodojo.com. Everything is on there. We do these calls once a month. Um, our spring session is starting. So if you're interested in getting started while you have time, um, give us a call. Um, we have a thing that you can do a voiceover once over call with uh, one of our team. Um, and if, um, and we'll 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 help you figure out where we can where we can um, where how how we can help you get to where you want to be, um, and um, thank you all so much for being here. This it, it always unfolds as it should, just like every circle with Eagle Woman does. Like yes, mm, there is no plan. We just we just right. follow the guidance, and this this unfolded so beautifully. I hope everyone got a lot to carry with them through the day. Um, I'm so excited to hear your voices. I always find a little ironic working in this format that allows us to get the most questions, but also doesn't allow me to hear your voice. <laughs> um, senseis, thank you so much, us, and um, thank you all for being here. Um, we're here for you at the dojo on all these levels. I encourage you to take advantage of connecting with these amazing senseis Thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you soon and call me if you need anything, okay? Thank you.